Hi there, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. In this video, I want to go over the uh, trusting God and believing in God, but not only believing in God, in, but believing in what He said is true and trusting Him. This will be a major factor. This will be a major factor, especially in these end times, on who would stay following God, who would endure through persecution, through tribulations, through trials, through all types of prophets and uh, 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 false prophets and false Christ coming to deceive them or deceive you. Who will hold on to the name of God? Who will hold on to his truth and say, no, Christ said this and I will hold on to that even if I die. For those who do not trust God, trust his words and have lack of belief you will fall away I'm sorry you will fall away if you can't trust Christ now in what he says as far as the kingdom of heaven and who will enter and who would not enter and you would not enter if you refuse to uh, uh, repent if you don't trust and believe that he said this is true if you don't trust and believe that you are able to heal the sick Raise the dead if you have the Spirit of God. Most believers, most of the people who profess themselves as believers, they do not trust Christ. They do not trust God. And this is the honest truth. I'm not lying. This is the honest truth when it comes to finances. You, can't, you don't know how you would make a way. People don't trust God. People don't trust Christ. They're double-minded. When it comes to uh, if someone was going into surgery, they pray. And after they pray, they worry. If you pray and you worry, that means you don't trust God. You don't trust Christ. People toss and they turn and they worry about so many worldly things. And yet these are the same things that they've been praying to God about. And you're still worrying. You don't trust God. You don't trust Christ. No, you do. Do you have belief in Him? It is those, once they pray, they let it go. They say, it is what it is. They already prayed to the Lord. They trust the Lord. It is what it is. That is trusting God. That is trusting in Him. Believing in Him. He will make a way. You already told Him what you need. And that's it. He will make a way. But in these last days, which we are living in today, oh man, you will be tried. Testing, testing, testing. The Lord is trying to see who is for him for real. This is serious because the thing is you're gonna you will be accessing the kingdom of heaven. Not anyone is worthy to access the kingdom of heaven. You have to be worthy. God would have to look at you and say, she or he let go of the sinful things of this world, though they had an opportunity, though he or she had an opportunity to indulge in these things. This person held on to me, truth, trusted me, believed in everything that I said and was not double-minded. No matter what, through the trials, through the persecution, through people attempting to deceive this person, they held on to me. It's like we are fighting to love God. We're fighting to hold on to Him. We're fighting to keep our relationship with Him despite the things of this world that's trying to hold us back from loving on our God from holding on to our God, from believing our God, from trusting our God, the things of this world, the things of this world, because the things of this world and this world period has been given over to Satan. Satan doesn't want you to trust God. Satan wants you to worry. Satan, Satan wants you to tell wants to tell you, God may not answer your prayers. God may not answer. Remember what he did last time. It's a Satan in your ear. He don't want you to trust God. He don't want you to believe in God. He wants you to give up every trial. He wants you to give up when persecution comes. He wants you to be deceived that he is the main one that's deceiving you. Attempting to deceive you. But if you don't trust God now, my brothers and sisters, with the smallest things, 
How will you trust them when the big things come? That's why I say many people will fall away. Even those who say, like Peter, I will die for you. I will die with you, my Lord. Wholeheartedly, I'm pretty sure he felt that he would. But then when the time of testing came, we already know Peter denounced God. Peter denied him three times. If you don't trust him now, you will have a hard time when that time of testing comes. When trials come for the name of God, for the name of Christ. When persecution come, would you renounce your faith? Or would you be put to death? Torture? Would you? Have you even sat down and thought about that? No, people don't think about that. Because they're waiting on a pre-rapture which is not going to come. You're setting up yourself for failure. Meditate on dying for Christ. Meditate on what ways how you would die for Christ and keep your mind on that. You're waiting for an easy way out. You have to understand you have to be worthy to access the kingdom of heaven. Not anyone can get in. Not anyone can get in. You have to worry about being deceived. People coming around, prophets, false prophets, false Christ, false servants, false teachers, false preachers. All this around you to deceive you, to pull you away from God. All this is testing. The closer we get to the end, the more it will intensify. That's why you have to hold on to biblical truth. You have to understand it. Not only hold on, you have to understand it. For many people read scriptures, yet they don't understand the deep the depth of what scriptures truly mean and only the Holy Spirit can reveal that to you for a person without the Holy Spirit can read scriptures and they can read the surface of the scripture and that's what they will get but when you have the spirit of God it is the spirit of God who is the teacher who gives you the depth of what that parable means while everyone is believing in one thing which is a lie the Holy Spirit is revealing something else to you and said that's the truth that's what you need to hold on to. Your lack of belief and your lack of trust in God now will hurt you in the end. Will hurt you in the end. But he said cowards who turn away from him will have their share in the lake of fire. Cowards. These are those who's holding on. These are those who are holding on to Christ now because your life, right now your life is good. Right now your life is good, so you're praising the Lord. You're holding your hands up. You're singing hymns in the church. You're praying and you're reading your Bible because your life is good. That's the only reason. But what about when the testing comes? What about when the trial comes? When your family begin to walk away on you, when your friends begin to talk about you, saying that you're too good to hang around them because you're, you're, you're holy now. It's not that you're holy. It's that God gave you a different mindset. It's that you're so focused on his come, return that you're not trying to uh, uh, socialize with worldly people. Worldly mindset. Their minds are not on the second coming of Christ. Their minds are not focused on if they were persecuted, would they be able to endure for Christ? Their minds are on the worldly things. Those are the kind of trials you'd be going through. Trials of losing your job for your faith. Oh, it's going to come. It will come. Losing your husband for your faith. Losing your children for your faith. Losing your friends. You'll, be in, you'll end up being alone. You may end up being alone for who? For Christ. And he said that. He said that to his disciples. If anyone does not leave their land, their homes, wives, children, for the kingdom in my sake. If you do these things, if it comes down to it, he said he will reward you. On earth as well as in heaven for many people will now many people will denounce Christ for their family for their friends for their jobs for their livelihoods for their homes to keep their worldly things they will denounce Christ 
because of these things. Lack of belief and lack of trust will cause you to be one of those who fall away in the very end. You will be like that, Peter. For yes, you hold on to God, you serve God, you love God, but when that testing comes, it will show. You have to have that focus now. You have to have that focus now, my brothers and sisters. Don't wait to when it happens because you don't know what your reaction will be. You say, oh, I didn't know. I didn't sign up for this. I thought it was going to be a pre-rapture. Oh, oh, I, uh, I believe God gave up on us. There may not be a God. All this was a lie. This is what you, This is a double-minded person. You know why you're saying that? Because the Antichrist is here. Because the Antichrist is here. It's said in Second uh, Thessalonians. This man, which is the Antichrist, will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. With this he will deceive many who do not trust the words of Christ, trust the words of God. Lack of belief. You will fall into the hands of the Antichrist and he will deceive you. And with him deceiving you, in his heart he will rejoice. In his heart he will rejoice because you did not believe God, but you believed him. This is just like in the days of uh, Adam and Eve. God gave Adam and Eve a commandment. They were to list. They were supposed to listen to God and God alone. Then a serpent came and deceived them. Who did they listen to? They didn't listen to God. This is just like this would be just like you in the last days. That's why it's important to trust the words of God. Either you trust fully or you don't trust at all. There's no half trust and half I don't trust. Either you trust him fully to the point where if your life is taken away, you say, at least my life is taken away and I believed. At least I died. At least I went out believing what my God has told me. That's it. At least I went out trusting the words of Christ. That's it. Christ knew when he died that his father would raise him from the dead. He trusted that. He trusted his daddy. Abraham trust God. Isaac trust God. Jacob trust God. King David trust God. The twelve disciples, they trust Christ. Why do you think they lay their lives down? Christians from centuries, tortured, burned alive. Thrown in hot water, thrown in hot fire, poisoned, chopped up for the word of God. Why? Because they trusted the words of God. When Christ said, on that last day, I will raise the dead. I will raise you all up on the last day. And he said he promised that. But we will have to go through tests. Great testing. Will you hold on to what Christ say? Would you believe every word that he say? Or would you be deceived by this antichrist? If you're not trusting in Christ right now, if you're not believing in and obeying his Ten Commandments right now, if you're not following Christ wholeheartedly right now, if you're still living in sin right now, it will be difficult for you. It will be difficult for you. For false Christ, false prophets, false messiahs will come. And they will speak of half truth, half lies. If you don't know scripture, if the Holy Spirit does not reside in you, you will be deceived. Once you're deceived, there's no need to be persecuted. Once you're deceived, there's no need to go through trials. Because you already lost the battle. You're deceived. It says the, the Antichrist will come to do works of Satan who counterfeit powers and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to hell. Once you're deceived, you already lost. You're thinking you won. This is how important it is 
to obey and to trust, to obey and to trust, to obey and to trust. Many are waiting for this pre pre trip uh, rapture. Where did it say that we're supposed to be having a pre trip rapture? Do you not understand that you have to be worthy to access the kingdom of heaven? You have to go through testing. You can't just read your scriptures and just think that you can go to heaven. When that time comes, you may have to die for the uh, truth. You may have to be sent to prison. You will have to face trials. Christ said, pray that you are able to escape all of these things that are coming upon the earth. When he said, pray that you're able to escape, he means at his second coming that you are the ones that are still alive. For he said, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are left will be caught up with him. Pray that you're able to escape all these things. But what if you're not? What if God said, you're destined for prison? You're destined to be killed. This is your test. If God says you're destined for something, it's going to happen. Whether you denounce him or you endure or you overcome, but this is what you need to do. In these days, you have to trust God. You have to have a personal relationship with God. And not, don't just lean on teachers. But especially in these last days, these teachers are wicked. They speak a bit of truth. But at the same time, they work for Satan. They're getting better and better and better at these lies. Year by year, they are very crafty. Because the person that they work for is crafty, who is Satan. You have to have a relationship with God. You need to talk to God every day. You need to talk to Christ every day. Pray and ask, Lord, do not allow me to be deceived. I don't want to be deceived. Tell him how much you love truth. I remind him every day, Lord, I love the truth. I will accept the truth. I have accepted the truth. I don't want to be deceived. If this is what you want, he will not allow you to be deceived. But you have to love the truth. You have to accept the commandments. You have to accept scriptures. Whether you like it or not, you have to accept it, abide in it, and obey it. And the Lord will not allow you to be deceived. He will keep you from deception. While Satan is going around the whole world deceiving those who are already on their way to hell because they refuse the truth and they refuse to accept that Yeshua is the Messiah and that his words are true. It's crunch time. It's crunch time for many of you know throughout other countries our brothers and sisters are already being killed at a fast rate. Our brothers and sisters are already being killed at a fast rate. It's so unbelievable to me that this is happening in my generation. Bless the Lord. Come, Yeshua, come. I'm dumbfounded. I am dumbfounded. It's like I'm dreaming that these things which Scripture speak about is happening in my generation. My generation. For Christ always said that he's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. And this is this generation. This is this generation that he will return. And we will see him return. We will see who that Messiah is. That for centuries people have been killed for. Going around preaching the gospel. I will see my Messiah. I will see my husband, my love. That's my husband. He sits on his throne. Trust him. You say you his you say you are his people. You say that he is your God. If this is true, you need to trust him. For we trust mere human beings more than we trust God. That's hurtful. That is hurtful. We trust human beings more than we trust God. Christ said, trust me. 
God said, believe everything that I say. This is us going back to Genesis. This is all of us going back to Genesis. God gave you commands. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to obey him? Or are you going to listen to the serpent? This Antichrist who is here. Are you going to listen to him and be deceived again? This is history repeating itself, people. This is what it's doing, my brothers and sisters. Like I said, lack of belief in the things of God and lack of trust in these last days will cause many of you who are listening to this video to this day to fall away from the Lord. And it is God who said in the book of Revelation, cowards who fall, who turn away from following me will have their share in the lake of fire. This is how much he wants you to endure. This is how serious this is. Don't say, oh, God will understand. He told you. Everything that is written in scripture is prophecy. And you know God is no liar. He will make sure that this happens so that you will know that he doesn't play. When he says something, it will go down. He said the cowards, those who turn away from following me you will have your share in the lake of fire no mercy it's not a game you have to be worthy to access the kingdom of heaven you have to be worthy those people in those other countries who are dying who have been slaughtered been beheaded been tortured burnt up sliced chopped Boiled, many of them thrown to animals for what? The word of God. And they gave up their lives because what? They believed God. They trust God. That God will raise them up and he is true. He is the one and true God and they rather die than to serve some other false God who is Satan himself. I rather die than to serve anyone other than the God who created the heavens and the earth and his son. I'd rather die than to give my life to anybody else because it is the God who created the heavens and the earth. It is his son, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit who I love, who's my family, the love of my life, gives me to strive to wake up and do the things that I do every day. That's my father, my husband, and my Holy Spirit. I remind them every day that I love them. And I can't live without them. And that's how you should be, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. You have to trust him. You have to believe him. He said, I won't let you down. Just trust me. If you can't trust him in the small things in your life that's going on, going on right now, you will have a tough time, a very tough time. And likely, without the help, without the help of the Lord, you will fall away. Pray, seek the Lord. Pray, seek His face. Pray that you are able to escape all these things. But if you are destined for prison, persecution, trials. So be it. That will be your testing. That will be your testing to see if you are worthy for the kingdom of heaven. But like I said, the Lord said, anyone who turns from following me, cowards, you will have your share in the lake of fire. Y'all take care, my brothers and sisters. <laughs>